В доме нету никого. Сказали, что никого нет. А я подержи самокат. Да. Блин, ничего не видно. лед машины побила водопровод же есть поливай да вот все вроде бы никого не ранило сильно в доме никого нету Russia pays record 25% of budget for Putin's paranoia, U.S. intelligence. Russian President Vladimir Putin's paranoid fear of alleged Western attempts to limit Russia's power has led to the spending of about 25% of the Russian state budget on militarization, according to Director of National Intelligence of the U.S., Avril Gaines. These estimates were made during a hearing in the U.S. Congress. Gaines said that NATO's efforts were aimed at assuring the opposite, that the West does not threaten Russia, but Putin himself accelerated events he was trying to avoid by his own decisions. We are talking about the accession of neighboring Finland and Sweden to NATO. The intelligence chief is convinced that Putin continues to believe that there is a threat to Russia and believes that increased militarization will convey this message to Western and domestic audiences. Senator Angus King asked how Putin can be convinced that NATO is not an aggressive bloc and is not going to invade Russia. According to the senator, Russian intelligence services are inherently a paranoid organization. Yes, I agree with you that there is some paranoia involved. Putin does not believe that the security of his country is in some way threatened, Gaines replied. The Russian president's strategic goals, according to her, also remain unchanged. He continues to see NATO expansion and support for Ukraine as confirmation of his belief that the United States and Europe want to limit Russia's power. In addition, Gaines said that Putin is trying to use global events, such as the escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas, to divide us from our allies. Putin is now convinced that domestic and international events are developing in his favor, the head of the National Intelligence Service said. She predicts that Moscow's aggressive tactics will continue and the war is unlikely to end any time soon. Putin is ready to spend more and more budget funds on its continuation. Putin has increased defense spending to nearly 7% of Russia's GDP, almost double the historical average, Gaines said, adding that the Russian defense budget now accounts for about 25% of all federal spending. Russia to launch three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine in May. Vadim Skibitsky, deputy head of defense intelligence of Ukraine, has spoken about a Russian three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine in an interview with The Economist. According to Skibitsky, May will be a key month when Russia will implement a three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine. The main factor is military. Although the U.S. Congress belatedly approved an increase in military aid, it will take weeks before it reaches the front line. It is unlikely to match Russia's stockpile of shells or provide an effective defense against low-tech destructive guided bombs. Both Ukraine and Russia may eventually face a shortage of weapons, but if nothing else changes, Ukraine will run out of weapons first. Skibitsky said the biggest uncertain factor in the war was Europe. If Ukraine's neighbors do not find a way to further increase their defense production to help Ukraine, they too will eventually be targeted by Russia. He downplayed the importance of Article 5, which deals with NATO's collective defense, 
and even the presence of NATO troops in countries bordering Ukraine. This article, in his view, may prove to be of little practical significance. The Russians will take the Baltics in seven days. NATO's reaction time is 10 days. Skibitsky said the second factor is Russia's disinformation campaign in Ukraine aimed at undermining Ukrainian mobilization and the political legitimacy of Volodymyr Zelensky, whose presidential term is set to expire on the 20th of May. Although the constitution clearly allows for its indefinite extension in wartime, his opponents are already highlighting the president's vulnerability. The third factor, according to Skibitsky, is Russia's relentless campaign to isolate Ukraine internationally. They will be shaking things up whichever way they can. He also noted that Ukraine's bravery and sacrifice have given Europe a multi-year head start, eliminating the immediate threat of once fearsome Russian airborne forces and marines for at least a decade. Now, as Skibitsky stressed, the question is whether Europe will reciprocate by allowing Ukraine to stay in the game. We have no choice. We want to live. But the outcome of the war isn't just down to us.